Hello guys and welcome to the Pro Dota Cup series by Hitbox TV. We are watching Nasty Potatoes fight against the Prime NND in a match in a best of... Ah, oh, god damn, it's a best of two. Ah, oh, that would've been such a great rhyme, boys. We, we ruined it, we ruined it. Why is it a best of two? Oh, well. Whatever. It's the best of two between these two teams and the SCA region of the Pro Dota Cup series. We are watching the second game of the best of two. First game goes to Nasty Potatoes quite convincingly. Sorry for the slight delay. The Prevent and D came a bit late, but it's all solved now. And Nasty Potatoes, uh, I mean, they, they're one of the best contenders. That, them, Mongols, Memphis Revolution were probably the standout performances of the last season. So it's not surprising that we'll see them do uh, as well in this season as well uh, against the Prime and D, which is one of the newer teams that comes from Indonesia. That said... Uh, it's, let's hope that Potatoes can get the 2-0. Honestly, I would like to see one of the previous contenders still showing their powerful. MVP Revolution already did that, and the Rasty Potatoes, um, I have great hopes for them. Obviously, I don't really care who wins, but it's the idea that, yeah, it's nice to see another 2-0. We already saw a tie. The Prevent ND is going to try to get that tie, but we'll see what happens this game. My name is D Swordfish. I'll be your caster for today. Let's get right into the draft, shall we? We have the Ursa, the Crystal May, and the TA, and the Invoker banned by Nasty Potatoes, banning out the Monkey King, the Trim Protector, the Omni Knight, and the Abaddon as a prime NND. And Nasty Potatoes pick up the Warlock, the Sand King, and now a third one, where a third hero, whereas the Prime and D pick up the next, next Assassin, Legion Commander, Life Stealer. Okay, the lanes for Prime and D are very stacked already. Legion Commander in the off lane, Nyx Assassin plays the position for support, one of the weaker position fours, honestly, and the Life Stealer already. You've shown two of your cores and the position four, you have not shown your position five yet, and you have not shown your mid yet. That is quite dangerous for the Prime and D because Nasty Potatoes goes for a much simpler lineup. A position 5 support, very solid by the way, Warlock taking away the combination of Warlock Legion in case they wanted to run that. And you combine that with a Sanking, which for now can be position 4 or an offlaner, you still don't know, so you actually have a lot of versatility yet. Let's see what Nasty Potatoes could pick against this life stealer. A Juggernaut, for example, looks quite nice. Juggernaut plus Warlock has an insane amount of sustain to push towers and also the Golem, so you can see a Juggernaut again by Nasty Potatoes, will not be surprised, it would work really well for them. And Abaddon's really nice against the Life Dealer as well. The Aphonic Shield to purge off the open wounds means that it's really hard to actually kill you in lane. You have a decent amount of magical and physical damage to deal against the Life Dealer. In addition to the slow being really good because it goes through rage. So you can help your allies kite him. Because you can usually hit him once or twice due to the burn time or whatever. So It's pretty nice. Uh, let's see what Nasty Potatoes picks up those four seconds to their pick. And it's gonna be a Troll Warlord, right, that's the other option. The Troll Warlord, or the Juggernaut, supposedly the most common counters to Life Stealer. After all, Troll Warlord is a Proto Bash against Life Stealer. You can still run him in the mid lane, which I love, because now their Nasty Potatoes draft is very ambiguous. You don't know if you have an off lane or a support, or... You don't know if you have a support off lane carry, a support off lane mid, a support support carry, or a support support mid. And those four combinations makes it so the last two picks are very incognito. It's nice, because then you don't know what to pick as the Prime and D against what they have. Because you don't even know if it's going to be Troll Warlord mid and you want to sacrifice a Nurse or so. The Prime and D to play it safe has to pick a support now. And a support with some stuns would be nice. A Coddle would not be too bad, actually, uh, thinking about it. Because you actually, you could really force out the Troll Warlord out of lane. Even if he's mid, you can just, you know, send the Coddle mid. You have a Nyx Assassin anyway. And the Coddle works really well in conjunction with Nyx Assassin. He's a support without any stuns. Nyx Assassin comes with two. He is a support that allows Nyx Assassin to delay his Arcane Boots. Or you can... Or Nyx Assassin can get a later Arcane Boots because you have the mana, the Chakra Magic to help him out. If you want to go for more traditional supports, it gets Vengeful Spirit also works out for them. It's very traditional, works very nicely against Troll Warlord and with Life Stealer and with Legion Commander. So, I mean, Vengeful Spirit would be the support, I guess, in traditional senses. I still would like to call it. Instead of picking up a Silencer for the Prime and ND. Okay, um, not much synergy with what they have until now. This, the Legion Commander Silencer is probably the biggest synergy here where you have a Global Silence and a Duel and you're guaranteed to get that Duel off and, and to win that uh, in team fight. And you really can't force that. So it allows the Silencer to be... Sorry, you can really can't prevent that. So it allows the Silencer to be a bit more of an initiator, whereas everyone else becomes more of... Uh, so the Silencer is more of an initiator instead of a counter initiator. You can dictate your own team fights. So you can go with the Duel and the Global Thanks. Silence. It's pretty nice. Nasty Potato showing off Sanking is going to be position 4. Very smart. Troll Warlord still unknown position. Acts as their... 
off laner. I am assuming the silencer is going to be a position 5, but it could be, very easily be a mid silencer. We've seen that before. We've seen Gary silencer too. We've seen mid silencer, and it works quite decently, uh, especially against the draft that he's up against. I mean, you're going to stop Sanking's initiation, Warlock's ultimate. It's a very good silencer pick, honestly. In fact, I would actually like to see for Nasty Potato something along the lines of a Storm if you're going to run Troll Warlord carry, or a Slark if you're going to run Troll Warlord mid because you do want or even slark in the in the mid position honestly because you do want to kill a silencer very early on being able to pick him off for example with a storm and eh, that would work out we're gonna ban on a venomancer mm. venomancer is one of the better picks against silencer and he's really strong as life stealer as well and nix assassin has a hard time killing him because venomancer does scale decently in terms of stats and Legion Commander can't really do much against him because, again, same issue with the Batman scale and the wards. So he would actually would have been a great pick for Nasty Potatoes in the mid lane. Why is he good against Silencers? That you don't really need to spam Plague Wards as much as people think. You can just use your ultimate and start auto-attacking with your poison sting. And you're still pretty relevant, even without spells. So, not bad. Oh, Nasty Potatoes better than a Meepo, just in case. Who knows? They might pick a Meepo and you don't have much of a lineup against a Meepo. If I want to go for a traditional pick, that being something along the lines of an Outworld Devourer. But I would honestly favor the Storm or the Ember. Mm. Storm or Ember, even though they have really nice silences, you could go for the Weaver as well. And the Weaver has a way to dispel that silence usually with a BKB. What else? I mean, traditional, well, Razor, Viper, uh, DK, all those heroes do well against Silencer. Behold the Horn of Madness. Okay. I don't know what to say with the Magnus. That pick kind of caught me off guard. He's really good with the Troll Warlord. To be Magnus from mid, and he's good with the Troll Warlord, honestly, because Troll Warlord can utilize the empower. Okay, actually, before we, we talk about him, let's talk. Let's see what the the Prime and D would pick up. Uh, they need one more pick, and that last pick has to be a mid as well for them, unless Silencer is mid. So what do you Tinker. run? Mid? Tinker. Yeah. Tinker seems good. I'm actually gonna go for the Invoker, but Tinker seems actually even better. Uh, against the axe the troll warlord the magnus the troll warlord is forced to go for bkb really early this game so tinker can be really effective against them the magnus is not really going to catch a tinker they have no way of catching a tinker in general we already saw that uzbad plays a pretty decent tink tinker the only issue last game was they could catch him out constantly had they picked up a storm they would have really stopped that tinker pick from happening and that tinker pick really crushed, crushed them so I, I don't know what to say about this Magnus pick. It honestly is, is really disconcerting, and I don't like that pick. On Despite the synergy going with Nasty Potatoes, you're up against a Silencer, one of the better heroes to go up against a Magnus. You're up against a Legion Commander, another good, really good hero to go up against a Magnus. You didn't know what their enemy pick was, uh, but regardless, now that it's a Tinker, now you know. Let's analyze first. Assuming you don't know, Magnus is a terrible pick regardless, because Magnus is actually really bad at, at laning, surprisingly enough, in the mid lane. Uh, a lot of mid heroes can really crush him, including the Silencer. And if you didn't, if, if now that you know that the Tinker is a pick, then the Tinker completely destroys you. You can go for a physical damage kind of Magnus build, which is still relevant or still decent. Sorry, let me take that out. Yeah. Uh, which is still decent, considering... That you're up against a life dealer, one up, but the life dealer himself is not that like Magnus is not that good against a life dealer if you play him mid because life dealer will just eat you up and make you completely irrelevant in a team fight. And they can also catch you out really easily. I don't like that Magnus pick whatsoever. And Magnus is a really good hero, so for there to be a lineup where Magnus is not good, that means that it's he's really countered. So you have to take that into consideration. And Nasty Potatoes win is definitely going to be because of their execution, their draft is a hundred percent times worse. Um, not a hundred times, just a hundred percent. Worse, sorry, 100% worse draft. Yeah, even though they have a really nice initiation, the silencer completely destroys them. And if they can play well, honestly, all they have to play is around the silencer ultimate. The, oh, wow, that's a really nice set, by the way. I actually really like that with a face with that. That's a really cool mask. He looks like a total war, like a total war um, hero, or not hero, like a total war unit by covering his mask. Though, I mean, in all honesty, that would be impossible to live that way because that you would die like you in the middle of the battle you would definitely definitely die because you wouldn't be able to breathe enough but that's a really nice set all right oh my god what is this what is this beautiful set oh, i like that mask that oni mask japanese style mm. is that the arcana i don't think that's the arcana uh, 
They have the banner, but that is a very nice mask. Okay, sorry. Let's let's stop <laughs> looking at the, at the my dollhouse simulator game. Let's uh, concentrate on the actual game. My name is D Swordfish. I'll be your caster for today. Let's see what the teams have for us today. We have the Prime and D here, and a Faro playing the Legion Commander in the offlane position. In the mid lane, we have a Tinker playing as Rusmine. As the two supports are R7 and the Next Assassin and Booble on the Silencer. Finally, as they carry this game, it's going to be Panda on the Life Stealer. What just happened? Is that an emote? I did not know he got a new emote. Life Stealer? Really? That was a weird emote. Anyway, that said, we have for Nasty Potatoes the Axe uh, played by Death Sama in the offlane position in the mid lane. Magnus played by Ponlo. Here in the first support position, or second support position, is Sanking uh, played by Eden. First support would be Crimson on uh, the Warlock. And finally, as the carry, it's a Toro Warlord played by TNT. So, that works out for the guys at Nasty Potatoes. Uh, I mean, yeah, the draft is good. Honestly, part of the Magnus. It's a really good draft. I actually like the draft a bit more, but the Ma the Silencer pick was fantastic. And then they completely went tunnel vision and forgot the fact that the Silencer is a hero. And they just ignored him, which I think might be the best option in some in some lineups, but in this lineup, I don't agree. That Tinker is really also going to have an easy win. Uh, level 1 skewer, level 1 empower. I mean, the Tinker's just kind of a field day with you, man. Yeah, look at that. You went for level 1 and. That's level 1 empower. It's a very questionable choice against a Tinker. Unless, actually, unless you know he's gonna push the tower, the lane. No, stop missing assets. You just got to wait for that hit to come in. Pondo, seriously, dude. He didn't even go for a Quelling Blade. What is wrong with you? That's two assets missed by the Magnus. Let's see if he misses a third one. No, that's three assets missed. Is he gonna get fourth? Yep, that's the fourth one. Ah, oh, fifth. Ah, oh, he got one. He got one, boys. Pondo got a last hit. He's at two now. And the Tinker's at 7. Yeah, I, I like watching this in, in real action because you can actually tell how many last hits Pondo is just missing because of the laser, how many last hits he's missing because of his own ability, and how many last hits he's missing because... Oh, that's a good shot. Uh, because of, well, Tinker just being an annoying ass and denying them. So, it's a, ni it's a nice little matchup. Honestly, in the early game, I'd be surprised if anyone died. In this off lane, we have a tri lane. Sorry, in this uh, safe lane, raiding safe lane, you have a tri lane with Nyx Assassin, Silencer, and Life Stealer. So, chance of you getting close to a Life Stealer with the amount of magical damage these two supports dish out is, is slim to none. You're not going to do that. Unless you want to commit suicide, in which case, yeah, be my guess. But the Life Stealer is just going to open wounds you if you get too close to this kid. Uh, so, that's not going to work out. Uh, then you have, on the other hand, the other aggressive or the other defensive tri lane, sorry, which is a Warlock Sanking. And a troll with an axe being in the jungle area because you know that. Yeah, I mean you know that someone's gonna be in the jungle area. Either here, either he's here, or he's around this area, right? So he's—it's not the chances of, or sorry, around this area. Uh, why? Around this area, Jesus! Why is it gold? Why is? It... So he's either around there or around there. So if you don't see him here, you harass him a bit, especially with the next assassin, you can just travel a bit further distances. Then you know for a fact that the axe is going to be in the enemy jungle, and you just really can't join him. Next, Legion Commander, similarly, has really good jungle properties, so same as an axe, so you don't really care too much. We were talking about this last game, having an offlaner that can jungle makes it so that the lanes are much easier, and much more static. The supports are the ones that have to create the space by trying to gank the Legion or the axe while they're in the jungle and whatnot. Which, it's obvious, it's obvious, right? It's what you want to do. I know, here in the mid lane, by the way, we're with Careful, we'll use laser, Pondo. And here's the marching machines from the Tinker. Ah, oh, he, he should be fine. The, the, the marching machines is actually gonna harass the guys, uh, or the Magnus a bit. And also take some damage onto the illusion, that's pretty nice. Being able to do those things early on in the game, getting more level than Archer the Machine, so you harass your melee enemy hero. And you can even go for the farming build, I love it. You can't, you're not gonna get a kill on the Magnus, because he's not gonna play like an idiot. He's, worst case scenario, he goes into the, the jungle. You don't want to force that either, because he's gonna get the same amount of farm in the jungle with the power build, and with an uh, Iron Talon. So instead, you just have to go for the March of the Machines build, puts a, yeah, the same amount of pressure in the lane anyway, but you're able to then farm much more efficiently. Well, that Skiro was really good though. Ruzban caught, has to use a little laser. He should be able to survive this. The martial machines won't get the catapult, and Ruzban does not go for the catapult kill. That would have killed him, actually. I, I was seeing it, and I was like, are you going to be greedy? Are you going to be greedy? No, he was not greedy, and that lack of greed helped him out. 
In the end, they get a deny, but it was worth it, so he didn't die. And give the first blood to the Magnus. Oh, and with this, oh, Rosemine denies the rune, saying, you might be faster, but I'm raging in the bottom lane. No, they go on to the axe, and the axe will die in a couple seconds, as the alien will just take his life here. I, I, I'm pretty sure he got a taunt. It seems like he got a taunt. That's, that's cool. Golden alien, actually. It makes him look exactly like killing. I don't understand why, he's, why they decided to just steal the alien. Thing. It's a very weird item to have. Honestly, it's actually really weird to have that as an item, but whatever. They, it's it's really cool. It looks amazing on a life dealer. So they're just gonna start taking the tower now. After killing the axe, it's pretty. They're pretty happy with that. Who got the first blood? Was it Panda? It was. So Panda is gonna be able to get a pretty fast might this lane, and he's pretty much having solo farm. This game seems much more beneficial to the prime and indie, honestly. Especially with the silencer existing, and the silencer able to get some some kills off afterwards. And now, in this mid lane, we see the Tinker is uh, actually not putting that much pressure on the bottom. Now it's starting. Now it's starting with the silencer going in. Yeah, they don't want to make. They want to make sure that the Magnus is not doing too much this way, uh, which is good. It's it's a bit weird because we're seeing. Uh, we, it, it, it's much different because what now? What's happening now for the as the prime is that. They know they have the complete lane domination. They know they have a life stealer that's very farmed. All they have to do is put a bit of pressure on the troll warlord, and they pretty much have it guaranteed. For some reason, life stealer has been missing lasses, or maybe because of the kill they got on the axe. But it's only a four lasted difference. It's very, it's honestly nothing. And he got the first blood as well, so that gives him a, a little bit of a boost. And all you have to do now is put a bit more pressure onto the troll warlord. Maybe join the or send the silencer to help out this in top lane. Put a bit of the slow from the arcane curse and, and harassment from the Legion Commander. And if Troll decides to use Whirling Axes, then that's actually a, quite a long arcane curse onto him. I do imagine the silencer is maxing arcane curse. He is. Doesn't even need to get a single level of against Glaives of Wisdom because he's, he's not staying in lane. Since he's not staying in lane for too long, then that means the Glaives of Wisdom is pretty much useless. You don't really need them. Uh, as they're more of a lane control skill early on in the game. And then you can grab more levels of it later on. And max arcane curse if you want to go for or the kills. And then some Magnus or Kinker is also very crucial. If you wait till the Empower is almost ran out, you're gonna force him to either hit last hit without Empower and without Shockwave, or well, you take more damage, right? Which is the alternative. And that is not too great of a trade to make for Magnus. Only issue here that you do, or only advantage here, I guess, that you have as uh, the Nasty Potatoes team is that the Axe is farming the jungle pretty efficiently and he's managed to beat the Tinker in terms of farm simply because he's just getting all these jungle creeps. He's just really doing well for himself. He's an Axe after all. Legion Commander does not have that same jungle ability. And she's trying to stay in the lane a bit more often, trying to put some pressure on the troll. It's not really working. Fight level 5 or 7, or seven. you see the power up next time. They know they can't outform an Axe, but. Well, Legion Commander could try, but she has to go for the press the attack build, or the so, overwhelming odds build, because that's the build you, you go for in the offlane. Meaning that her young goaling abilities are much, much worse. That's the advantage of the axe, by the way. Oh, that's nice. Control getting, or getting a kill on one. Is that dancing? That's the advantage of the axe, which is that he, his natural build, the uh, 1 1 3 build, or even 1 or 2 1 3 build. Sorry, either either one one three build or two oh three build. That's usually the builds on the axe. And regardless of what build he goes for, they're both good for the jungle. Whereas Legion Commander, the off lane build, the proper press the attack, maxing press the attack, and maxing overwhelming Oz build is not particularly good in uh, the jungle. And even if you don't max press the attack and you just go straight overwhelming Oz, which is what everyone else does, uh, what most people do, which is a hundred percent sure maxing the overwhelming odds, you end up losing. That's unfortunate. Because in the jungle, it's just not going to happen. Same amount of farm. The Tinker, though, is doing quite nicely. And he's going to get some stacks later on in the game. I mean, he has 55 blasts, and he's only second to throw Warlord. In terms of net worth, he's up there. Uh, beating the... I mean, the, uh, he's not being the life killer, but he's being the Magnus for sure, which is important. And Ponlo wants to go for a kill, misses the skewer, and that's important. As the March of the Machine just clears the rest of the wave. Ponlo doesn't want to fight in the middle of the wave. Even with his double damage, it's a bit dangerous. He already went for the Infused Raindrops, which does not help too much against the March of the Machine's Tinker. Infused Raindrops is a bit better against the Heat Seeking Missiles Laser Tinker, and that's a rare build, so. So, not the best of an item against him. This is going to get destroyed quickly. Oh, the courier. They don't see this. The vendetta is not available, so they can't just, you know, hit the courier once and beat it. They still want to go for the kill. They have a duel. There is uh, the usage of the Curse of the Silent plus the Arcane... Sorry, the Arcane Curse plus the last word. Curse of the Silent is just to be the old one. 
Yeah, I like the Curse of the Siren better. It has much more of a ring to it. But of course, Curse of the Siren was one of those useless skills because as soon as they can activate the skill, it was done. I'm gonna stop playing. But... What? Okay, they got two kills at the same time, and I didn't see any of them. That camera work today is not good. I'm for the life stealer though. And this top lane NFR. We'll just be joining in, getting the uh, overwhelming odds up. And harassing troll ever so slightly with this with the sanking still around. Hard to really get, kill them. They don't see this. I don't think they see the sanking, but they can they know that they can't play too aggressively. Ruzwan just finally joining in. He wants to get travel boots a bit sooner. Honestly, for being a lane against the Magus, I'm surprised the Tinker did not abuse him anymore. Because he could have abused them considerably more than he did. And the Tinker decided, nah, we're, we're just going to go for the Marching Machine start to farm up. And that, this means that now you have to get a huge farm boost because of the build he went for. And I like the build he went for, but he didn't, uh, harassing the Marching Machines in the early game is a bit harder. But he didn't use the laser too much. Uh, in fact, he's maxing the, the heat seeking missile, so he's going for a traditional Tinker build, essentially. And the Magnus is recovering very well here in this lane. He's going to be able to get the Blink Dagger on the same time as the Trial Boots come in, meaning he's going to have much more of an impact. The Trial Boots are only relevant once Tinker gets a you know, many more skills and, and abilities and things that you can rearm. For now, they're just Travel Boots to get healing, which isn't that great. Another kill onto the Troll Warlord. That's why I'm only being camera. And Eden will now be targeted here as Dark Aggression. I mean, they don't know if he's there. Oh, they do. They're picking something, so clearly they know Eden's there. Yeah, they, they, they're just gonna go for him. Look at this. Uh, an alien and a bug in the trees. It seems like the start of a joke, but it turns out it's the start of a kill. Spike Carpus does not stop the Sandstorm. Does not understand how Sandstorm works. I can tell. And the duel finally will catch him. Regardless, there's the last word onto him as well, so he's gonna go down no matter what. In that duel, giving a bit more dual victory damage to the Legion. I think it's the first duel she wins. Yep, 10 dual damage for her. And with the axe coming in, he's ready for the Berserker's Call. He's just revealed his Blink Dagger. Now the rock from the Golem. Sorry, that, that, that Golem dealing a lot of damage. The rock from the Warlock. In he goes the RP. Beautiful RP from Nasty Potatoes. Catching down three. And two, one goes down. The second one will be the Tinker. They just want to kill the Life Stealer, but they don't have the damage. They do stop a salve, though, right now. And he still has the armlet. Should be able to make it out of their life. However, that three man RP, in addition to a great usage of the Berserker's Call and a great reveal of Blink Dagger, despite the axe dying, they get, what, two for one? Uh, two for two in the end because the Nyx is asked, or the, the Sanking died regardless, but that worked out really well for them. And now for the Prime NND, they want to get some sort of revenge kill. Perhaps on the Warlock, the Phase Boots advancing forward, but he's not going to find it. There's the help of the Legion Commander as well, and in comes the Nexus Assassin, catches the Warlock out with an Impale. The Infused Rain Ups will not save him against the physical damage the Life Stealer is dealing. And even though the Impale did not kill him, the right hand or left hand from the Life Stealer does. Oh, it is left. He's left handed here. Oh, interesting. Interesting, I just, he goes, like, he gets grasps at you. Like, someone's throwing a glaive at you, if you think about it. The the silencer throwing a glaive at you. Like, an actual weapon is doing less damage than someone just, like, grabbing at you. Look, that's all life stealer does. He just grabs at you. It's very weird. Le Legion, Legion should be dealing more damage than life stealer. She has a goddamn sword. He's just using his weapon. The big, big axe from the axe. I mean, this is ridiculous. Oh, well. Don't too logical. Uh, the Prime and ND will be taking this top tower, and this is pretty important. Being able to take away the jungle from the enemy team, especially from an Axe and from a uh, Magnus, which... Okay, two heroes can utilize the jungle well, and you have a hero that can clear the jungle pretty easily. So that means the stacks... Actually, even the Troll Warlord. The stacks for the Troll Warlord are, are not as safe anymore, because you have much more vision here. In fact, you can already see the aggressive wards coming out from the Prime and ND. And, more importantly, you can see the fact that you have a Tinker, which is the best hero to take the stacks down. He's going to be faster than the troll no matter what. The martial machines, he can spam as much as he wants, and he can even zone out the troll warlord if needed. Okay, this is a kill onto the Sama. A really good Berserker's call prevents the Impale from happening, and he's the TP from the Sand King. The Sand King's going to try to help out and at least kill the Nyx Assassin, and he has Spike Carpus, can still use it. They're going to find Panda in the back lines. The Whirling Axis, though, fails, and R7 will try to commit suicide against the Stack of Ancients. Won't be able to. Death Sama getting the kill with the Calling Blade, I believe. No, seems that he just spun and killed him by accident. So, in the end, they get the kill anyway. So that's good for the guys at the Prime and Indeed, who will be taking... Sorry, that's good for the guys at Nasty Potatoes, who will be taking a kill and saving their axe from sure death because of a fantastic Berserker's Call. That should have been Vendetta and boom, and Pale right after. Or, or take a bit of a space and just Vendetta... Sorry, Vendetta and Pale right out of Vendetta and then hit him with the extra damage from the Lifestealer's uh, 
uh, invest, or alternatively try to hit him with a vendetta, get a bit of distance away, and then boom and pay. That was the only way of doing it, but it was hard regardless. Even a spike carpus would have sufficed actually to stun the axe, but yeah, because uh, you can hit him and spin. Actually, spike carpus vendetta, hope that he gets a spin, and then he's done. That would have been an interesting play, but would have also been uh, pretty much unlucky. But regardless, Tinker, I mean, losing losing those two there was uh, quite grueling for them. They don't have an invoker to really combine with the Nyx, so the whole point of their strategy is either the Tinker gets level 2 boots, or you have a life stealer that just goes around with them. That life stealer still has a good quiet, that's later. Well, the Troll Warlord, thanks to the Empower, has been able to outfarm the life stealer finally, despite the Midas on the life stealer, so that means he has actually 2,000 extra gold, but the life stealer is not. Oh, never mind, he actually didn't go for Midas. He decided to go for Rock. Oh no, the duel comes out at the same time as the RP, that was not what they were expecting, as the Rock from the Golem uh, for the Warlocks it manages to take down two. Now Panda is the only surviving member here, has to arm a toggle, is managing to do it for now. The Fatal Bonds, though, will ensure his kill with... Was that just one hit from the Warlock? Jesus Christ, they dealt so much damage. I think he just armored toggle last second. Might have armored toggle last second, right as the hit was coming. Oh well. They come the rock from the golden which the rock from the warlock. Jesus. The rock from the warlock. I don't know why that keeps happening. Anyway. A warlock is gonna get hit as Midas himself. Which is better than left hitter's Midas. That's another great RP that saves your life. I mean getting the duel off, but at the same time as the RP catches it out, the only surviving member, I believe it was a mixed assassin or so we've got. And forcing them back into the team fight. That was really good from the Magnus. And ensure that every single team fight that the enemy team does upon you with the duel or whatever, you can counter and counter initiate them strongly so the duel has been just been wasted. Granted, Legion Commander just won the duel, but 60 minutes in, 20 duel damage, not to worry too much about it. You're more concerned about winning team fights than winning duel. Oh, there's another third duel though. <laughs> Talk about duels. Uh, they thought that the Warlock is not going to die in this situation. Cast the U Shadow Ward, but can't because the last word will just finish him off. Ironically, Ward versus Ward, which one wins? It's the last Shadow Ward. With the uh, help from the Troll Warlord, they should be able to take this tier 1 quite soon. Quite easily, however, the Tinker is trying to defend this as much as he can. Troll Warlord being dealt a bit of damage with their heat seeking missiles. It's middle lane, in comes the Axe with the Berserker's Call. They go on to the life to get a bit of damage. The Berserker as well to stop his uh, rage from happening, but Panda will take him to this tower anyway. Nobody tried to deny it, which was a bigger issue, I think, there for the. For the late, the sanking, so he could have denied it once he burst back in, but whatever. You know, not the worst of plays. You do stop the life stealer from pushing any further, you deter the enemy team from pushing. I guess they only got a tier 1 mid, it's not that big a deal. Troll Warlord is working now on his BKB, whereas Life Stealer just finished. Desolator. Desolator is pretty good against Troll Warlord, not the best agility game in the game. Uh, 2.8, not 3.3, you know, that that's, it actually makes quite a difference. But 2.8 is still a decent agility, so Desolator is not the best. He has a good amount of armor. It's not like Life eats him up completely. His HP is not too high, even though he likes going for stats. He do doesn't have, you know, an insane amount of HP that some people do, like that level of what? 3k, you know, 2.8k, 3k. It's just that, that's way too strong. It's way too good. Let's see, TMT, finding out these ancient creeps, and then I'll put in power. Ancients go down. Easy stuff for them. Uh, as Nixus has him, getting caught up by the RP. Oh, that's a skewer back up to the tower. That's weird because he came with a presence. And now the global science might be able to turn this around. As Panda starts hitting the troll world, troll world wants to kill the next assassin. The Berserker's call catches out. And even the golem from a Crimson to bring down Panda, but they haven't killed him just yet. The duel comes in, but right in the middle of a shrine. Now the epicenter from Eden. They're gonna be able to kill the Legion Commander as the life has also been killed in the back lines. The axe comes in with a cooling blade, and that dunk will ensure the death of the Legion Commander. Nasty potatoes taking down three. He the life stealer dies in the back lines. I couldn't watch every single kill occur, but I did what I could. And that is pretty beneficial, apparently, for the guys at the Primate and Deep. Pretty, pretty beneficial. As, I mean, sorry, uh, for the guys at Nasty Potatoes. As they are able to take, what, a couple, a couple good and easy team fights? Without losing too much as a result. Uh, they take a kill on the life stealer, which is very important. They take a kill on to the Legion Commander, also important. And they even waste the ultimates with things like Duel, for example. Mind you, like I said, the light draft is better for the guys at the Prime and ND, but they're not executing it well at all. Those Global Silences, though, that could have been a great uh, team fight turn. They didn't do enough damage and they came a bit too late. The Magnus is going for the physical damage build, like we thought, with the Echo Saber and then going into, you know, Shadow Blade, Silver Edge. I believe you want to go for Bloodthorn. 
etc etc and they work out for them they work out for them quite nicely so uh, nasty potatoes in the end is executing 10 times better than the prime nd is which is good even if you have a worse drafter at least make sure that you know your strategy a bit better and this is the only way you can actually i mean not against pro teams because you're not going to be better than than or pro teams what i'm saying not against tier one teams because you're not going to be better than the tier one team in terms of execution but when you know that you're better than the enemy team to some degree say screw it we can't draft as well maybe they have better strategy or better ideas but we are going to be able to play better than they are uh, and that's the whole point um, well as i say that though they do catch out the magnus in the top lane well it's the draft we'll see how it bites him in the ass a bit later more than anything see if it works Now that's Summer. Joining him will be the Sand King. And they might find Boo Ah, this is a good kill. Especially killing the Sirens. Oh, this is really crucial. Because getting rid of that Global Sirens for the next team fight. Mm. Now you can fight and take a tower easily, which much more safety. Because you know the Global Sirens is up. And you know the Sirens are had it. So killing him means 23 seconds now for a free tower pretty much. And they do TP to defend this. Is it going to be a Tinker defending this? And the rest of the team just doesn't really care. Troll World went for a really fast BK. As well. We were talking about that in the draft, so you need a 5 pkb against Tinker, there's no other way of doing it. Uh, I don't like this though, they could have taken the tier 1 put a bit more pressure here. You got a BKB after all. Is a tier 1 worth a 10 second BKB though? No, not true. So I, I see the idea. Okay, R7, click. careful, because he is coming with an infest bomb inside him. He's a next assassin after all. Go on to TMT. No, R7 is not gonna find any sort of uh, wild kids. There's fun look and he's joining the RP. Oh no, the signs came out a bit too late because the PKB for the troll was already activated, and I mean, there was nothing they could do against the troll warlord with empower. That was sorry. The, the battle trance on the BKB. The battle trance on the troll warlord was already activated. He dealt a ridiculous amount of damage to both the life stealer and the next assassin. And, I mean, now you can just to push this lane. Look at that. Go with the empower. It's just ridiculous. And he can take towers easily. They just kill the life stealer again. And life stealer from being top farm. He's been constantly going for these kills and losing as a result. Because you don't have a Midas to allow you to, you know, farm back up. And you don't have... I mean, you're going for this later Mordigan build. Which is the build that you want to get an early game domination with. But it's not happening. As you can see, the net worth is actually going in favor of Nasty Potatoes. And so is the experience. Oh, wow. The experience is going a lot in their favor. It's almost 12,000 in their favor. You can see the hero level silencer has been, you know, been left behind by quite a lot. Uh, Leech Commander is also behind the axe. Troll Warlord just completely destroyed the Lifestealer with those constant kills. And now this is a free Roshan for them, essentially. Lifestealer is really bad at taking Roshan. Troll Warlord is really good. So it's not that dangerous because even if they leave it with low health, the enemy team will have to commit a lot to this. And actually, Duke managed to kill the, the silencer. And now they're going to the next assassin. Goodbye, next assassin. Just dunked in the end. Thanks to wow, the damage from the Troll Warlord and the axe talent. Is actually really good. 75 damage plus the battle trance. Oh, yes, please. And they want to go over the duel. They see this. They trap the ages before the duel can come out. And the Legion Commander won't be able to initiate properly. As the Troll Warlord will essentially grab that Aegis, have a perfect reincarnation. And now he's ready to take some more towers. And he is real fast at taking objectives. They see that TP, but instead they want to go for something better. That being Panda, they know where he is. Death Sama has targeted him out. And look at this. TMT is even going behind these towers just to be able to kill Panda. Panda has to go into the trees. Still has a TP. will have to TP away. He doesn't see this though. I actually don't know the tower gave him vision. Yeah, I should have seen it. I, th I think he should have seen it. Alright. Double vision. Now for both teams. Oh, the Burrow Strike. Not gonna catch that Ruse Mine. Oh, they really want to kill this Tinker, which is the only thing that's stopping the Nasty Potatoes from completely destroying what the, the Prime Entity has. You know, just going in and, and taking all their towers and then utilizing the Troll Warlord efficiently. It's, it's just the, those towers. The, I mean, sorry, the Tinker. The Marshall Machines, constant harassment, the laser, whenever you try pushing. It's just. He's that. That's that's why he's so powerful. Uh, so right now, what they're trying to do is catch him out and then force. Once once you catch him out, force the fight and then win as a result. But it's really hard for them. They actually aren't able to do any of that. That's Samas going in with a smoke can. Careful. This could be a pretty dangerous smoke can. Oh, he 
goes prone low with a skewer. Fantastic skewer. They did finally catch him out, but they could use the silence. Not before, or not after the battle trance came out this time, but the burst cycle like, will eventually catch this Tinker anyway. And that's going to be a death onto the Tinker regardless, as the guys from Nasty Potatoes will be taking this tier 2 down bottom. And possibly more. I mean, they still come with a warlock and a rock. They know the excesses around. They're gonna start killing the patrol warlord. He still has the Aegis anyway. The counter push from the Legion Commander, the Life Stealer, is decent because he has a Desolator, but it's not decent enough. The Troll Warlord deals so much more damage. And Troll Warlord now starts to go onto this tower as well with a Fervor stack stacking up. He doesn't really care much about the damage on the Silence. I don't know why he decides to restart the Fervor stack. That was really weird. The Impale goes onto him and it is sun for quite a while. The open wounds as well. No rock just yet. TMT wants to keep on fighting. There's the rock finally. TMT is healing up completely thanks to the Morin Mask. And he manages to survive the attack from the Life Dealer, the attack from the Tinker. Nasty potatoes are taking this game by the horns and telling the enemy team exactly where to shove it up as TMT just doesn't care. Finally loses the Aegis. And, I mean, TMT is going to com completely uh, take these racks and, and, I mean, continue fighting. Why not? He has a BKB, wants to go into Ruse Mine, changes into range. The duel comes out on the axe, but Ruse Mine's about to die. The Tinker just forced to buy back. Uh, die back, sorry. That's fantastic, as the duel does go in the Legion's favor. They, she doesn't actually win it, but she does get the kill. However, an axe dead for a Tinker, Legion, and Life Stealer. Are you, do you really want to make that trade? That's going to be a guaranteed rack for the guys in Nasty Potatoes. Two, a uh, whole lane of racks. And they still have the Warlock Golem to help him push. He's not the best at pushing objectives, though. He's more of a lane pusher. And he can't, they couldn't really stop that uh, Troll Warlord from TPing. In the end, they're going to just let him go. They don't have an Aegis. They do have buyback and everything. They could be, put a lot of pressure. But instead, the Troll Warlord decides to change from going from NKV to going from, for Scotty. Allowing him to just snowball completely out of control by having that unkillable status onto him, right? He's going to be Zul'jin. Uh, no, the the whole point is that he's gonna have the. I'm kidding. Please don't, please don't ban me because I talked about heroes in the storm. Uh, he's gonna have the the armor and the HP to withstand most of the damage from NP and ND. Honestly, all the damage because even though they have a mix of magical and, phys and physical damage, both of them are not that powerful. The Tinker doesn't actually do that well against high HP targets or any sort of regen, and you have the Shadow Ward from the Warlock anyway, in addition to the regen that the strength from the Scotty will give you, right? So the Troll Warlord with the Scotty is actually going to be really scary. Being able to chase down the Life Dealer as well, so he can't do anything. In fact, he can just kite the Life Dealer, and Life Dealer has been forced to go for Heaven's Halberd, which Troll Warlord can dispel if he just goes for the BKB right after. And the idea will be Heaven's Halberd, uh, force Troll Warlord to go for BKB, then silence him, but you don't really care that he's silenced at all. Wow. It was a really well-played game by the guys at uh, Nasty Potatoes. It really is. <laughs> They're playing very well uh, until their strength completely. Let's see if the Private MD will be able to turn this around with a Nyx Assassin gank. I don't know. So they know the Troll Warlord's here. They know that he's attacking the tower. You think you should, you should see them. You, you can't see them. Oh, they do find the axe though, that's a good tool. The goal signs as well, but the Troll Warlord has already used his global his BKB and is ready to kill the Legion Commander, so it's an axe for the Legion Commander, definitely worth it as the RP comes out and brings down both the Sank both the Nyx Assassin and the poor Life Stealer. And now Boo Boo will join the Club of the Dead as he's destroyed by the Troll Warlord. Only thing left alive is his Tinker, and that is 40 seconds for the Life Stealer. No, GG. GG. It's a disaster, says says the Legion Commander. GG calls the Prime NND. They know they can't beat the Troll Warlord, and no silences have been completely destroyed by the Magnus, who didn't even go for any items to stop it. It's just, it's just been played fantastically well. Granted, I do believe the draft is still better. I, I, I stick with my guns here. And I, I believe the draft is better for the Feminine D, but Nasty Potatoes played ridiculously better. They have an RP that they used efficiently, constantly getting three-man RPs or two-man RPs at the very least. I want to see if he had a BKB. Oh, he didn't even bother. Look at him. He didn't bother. He was probably going to build BKB now, but he didn't bother trying to get anything against that silence. Which is what's scary. You know, the, the, he just... They didn't get any BKB to stop that silence, and that, and that really crushed the, uh, the... That shows how weak that silencer was in the whole game, in the comparison. And honestly, that was just a much better performance by... by um, the guys from Nasty Potatoes. That's all World of Works wonders for them, and they really crushed the life dealer. Revealing the life dealer pick so early in the draft was a... Was a Crucial, crucial mistake. As Troll Warlord was such a hard counter to him. They should have banned the Troll Warlord, if anything, honestly. We were considering the Ursa, I suppose, and we were considering the Juggernaut, but Troll Warlord is an actual hard counter against Life Stealer, and we saw it that game, especially with the Scotty. That said, guys, my name is D Swordfish. I have been your caster for today. Hope you've enjoyed the cast as per usual. If you did, follow me on Twitter. If you didn't, feel free to tell me why in the chat. I always appreciate criticism. 
uh, still want to improve. We will be coming back shortly with the game number three of the Pro Dota Cup uh, today. Actually, it's going to be in an hour, so I'm probably going to turn the stream off and turn it back on in an hour. Yeah. Oh, no, it's not going to be an hour. It's going to be in 30 minutes. Uh, we'll turn the stream off for a second and then come back up with the last game of the day. MVP Revolution versus Happy Feet will be fighting up in the last game of the day. Hope you've enjoyed the commentary as per usual. And I'll see you guys shortly with some more Pro Dota Cup.